Hey guys, this is Mark here. I've owned my PC for a little over a month and in that time I've been playing iRacing religiously. Now, I wanted to discuss with you guys whether iRacing is worth it. iRacing is quite a big commitment and quite a big expense. So I just wanted to talk to you about the beginning of iRacing really. So this is not just a game, this is marketed as the premium sim racing title and that's backed up for the fact that professional racing drivers use this sim from pretty much every discipline in motor racing including of course Max Verstappen and Lando Norris and the likes of Nicky Team and other racing drivers as well and if it's good enough for them then surely you'd think it's good enough for us. I have played iRacing for a little over a month now and I don't really play anything else. I was so hyped about playing Project Cars 2, playing Formula 1 2019 and to be honest with you I've hardly touched either of those two games purely because I have been focused solely on iRacing. Now, Formula 1 2019 is by far the best Formula 1 title that's ever come out and I was looking forward to that game so much and I'll tell you what, it probably is an absolutely fantastic game but I just cannot see myself playing much else other than iRacing which again surely shows that it's a good title. iRacing was released in August 2008 and it is from the developers of a racing game called Papyrus Racing which was a sim from the late 90s and after that sim was shut down members of that team collaborated with another team which dealt with third party mods for that game collaborated and they formed iRacing. So in 2004 development started for iRacing and four years later in 2008 of August it was released to the general public. Now going on to iRacing and what it is today. So you have unlimited racing 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now within that there's 40 official race series and over 400 private leagues as well. Now, when you buy iRacing Stay out of the box, the the it comes line. with 20 cars and 21 tracks, which is for free. And the fact that you can purchase more cars and tracks is great. There's over 100 laser scanned cars and tracks. Now, 20 cars and 21 tracks obviously isn't a lot. So that leads me on to what you pay for. So. For around $14, hovering around that mark, you can choose from any one of the tracks that iRacing has to offer. And you can also buy any of the cars okay, as well Mark, for ready. around $11 to $12. Go, they go, often go. have one promotions where you can get bulk discount for cars and tracks. And also for the subscription alone, uh, right now they have 40% off so the full price per month is eight pounds per month which of course 40 percent off of that one year is currently at 110 dollars and two years is 199 dollars so for two years 199 dollars 40 percent off works out to be about 120 us dollars people my age used to buy games when they were younger and we would pay 30 or 40 pounds for a game there'd be no downloadable content or anything so you pay 40 pounds and you get the game for life so that leads me on to a bit of a con and i don't mean in the literal sense con but i racing you never truly own any of the content because it's subscription based if you bought a month and you bought 10 tracks and 10 cars after that month and it expires, you don't own that content. You can re-join iRacing and get that content back, 
but it's just worth bearing in mind it is a lot of money we'll go on to that on the cons when we summarize whether iRacing is worth it or not so let's talk about the game itself I think iRacing is the best word I can describe it is smooth the frames per second are incredible the game looks beautiful and for a game which the engine is over 10 years old still looks absolutely fantastic this game is constantly evolving new cars new tracks the new damage model which has been recently showcased by iRacing and the track is also very similar to project cars so it has a live track function so if a car spins off and goes in the dirt then you'd expect to see that dirt on the racetrack Project Cars 2 does this, in my opinion, better than anybody else because they also have dynamic weather and puddles will be on the racetrack where you'd expect to see puddles in real life. Unfortunately, with iRacing, there is no rain in that sense of a word. When I say dynamic weather, you do have temperature changes, so the track and ambient temperature will increase or decrease you also have a day and night cycle as well so this would be this is very good with doing 24 hour events or long endurance racing because doing an endurance race in the old model before the day and night cycle came through it would be very boring you would carry on doing your stints throughout the night and you still have daylight weather but of course this has been changed now and we do have a fantastic day night cycle one thing i will say about the dynamic track especially when sun sets and you can see the sun glaring onto the track and the rubber on the track as well after quite a few laps of racing it really does look absolutely stunning and I cannot see how anyone could complain about the graphics because a lot of the time when you see iRacing you can see from replays the graphics don't look fantastic but that's purely where they've been turned down and I would say that this game in terms of graphics is really up there but it's not just about the graphics it's about everything it's about the tyre models it's about the feel of a car when you're going through corners. It's the fact that you're racing against some of the best people in the world. But just going back onto the detail, the attention to detail that iRacing does so well, you'll see details like the crowds building up over a race weekend. You'll see dirt on the cars. You'd also see the damage and the dirt is done really well sounds in my opinion are probably not as good as maybe project cars or the formula one game of recent years but i racing is still very good when it comes to sound and being immersed in that experience the sounds when you're inside your rig and especially if you have 5.1 surround or if you have a headset which is decent you can certainly feel like you're inside a racing car you can hear the rumble strips uh, you can hear the limit of the grip when the tires screech when you're going through corners like i said it's not as good as project cars 2 in my opinion but the sounds are really really good i would say though one frustrating thing about iRacing is the incidents they are extremely frustrating how they're analyzed they are analysed how long you can go without an incident. So you would get one incident point for leaving a track. You would get two incident points for spinning and losing control of a vehicle. You would get four incident points for being hit or hitting someone with severe force. Just to reiterate that, you will get four incident points if you are hit and it's completely not your fault.
That's, in my opinion, one of the most frustrating things about iRacing. In numerous occasions, I've been in a race and I've ended the race and been so angry Incident in Blue I wanted like to Miller. hurt somebody. One thing about iRacing and the incident count is if you hit too many incidents, if you have too many incidents, you will be disqualified. Uh, that will depend on what type of race or series or if it's an official race or not as to how many points you have before you're disqualified. I think it discourages hard racing. A lot of the time, as you can see in this video here, I have held back on Five corners where I feel I could have overtaken, okay, but I've done this sure because I don't want to compromise my safety rating and my potential of going to the next class. The game itself always evolves, as I mentioned before, there's a new damage model which is coming and it looks absolutely fantastic. In regards to support with VR, it has a very good support and a lot of the top VR headsets are compatible. You can normally find around 90 frames per second in race conditions which is pretty impressive. You can also make the game come alive by third party programs such as Trading Paints which allows you to customise your own paints, share with friends and also to race different liveries on cars. Simply download the program and then have it open when you're playing and then your car will have a custom livery like you can see on this race and also with the uh, other cars around me as well as my own. Going on to some pros and cons about iRacing, there's always somebody to race. You feel really accomplished winning a race. It's not easy, so when it happens, it's fantastic. I haven't won a race yet. Uh, I've probably done maybe 10 official races, and I think third is my best finish. But when you finish a race and it's been extremely close, hard racing, it really does feel good. You're going against people who are paying a lot of money for a subscription and they're not going to be people that just want to hurtle off on the first corner. And uh, you of course get incidents, sometimes that's good because it helps you make up places, but unfortunately when you are in a race and you get hit from behind, and eye racing counts it as equally your fault. That is very frustrating, but we'll go on to that in a moment with the cons. There's such a high accuracy with cars and tracks. This is a fantastic pro. They are millimeter accurate. They have been laser scanned and they look absolutely stunning and you will not find another sim that has such perfection with their detail for their cars and tracks in my opinion. It is the best oval sim racing, so if you're from the United States and you want to just play oval or you're from England or anywhere in the world and you just want to play oval racing, this is the only game really that you should consider. The fact that they do oval racing so well. As mentioned before, the uh, damage model is fantastic and it's being updated as well, so it's constantly evolving. As mentioned before, another pro is it does support most VR headsets. Their live track system is fantastic. It's great. It works really well. If you see the dirt being kicked up in certain corners, you see it on the windscreen, you see it on the car. And another pro, the last one is, the game is always evolving. So new cars, new tracks day night cycle, damage. The game is always evolving. One thing that always puts me off Formula One uh, is you spend 50, 60, 70 pounds on the game and every year you buy a new one when I would just like to just have the one and then I'd rather pay 20 pounds, 30 pounds a year for an updated version rather than buying a whole brand new game so it keeps all my stats from the previous year and it remembers who I am, it remembers what races I've won, who my rivals are. In iRacing, you will have this game 
evolving year on year and it is a subscription based game but you can see why. I keep saying game, it's more of a sim. It is a sim, it's not a game. It's not a game, it's game. It's not a game, it's, it's not. It's, it's it. children play games and we play sims. Not sims as in the game, I mean simulators. One of the cons, uh, it's very expensive. When you look at how much it is per year, even that really is mitigated. $110 for a year, 40% off. What's that, 60, 70 dollars-ish? So that's what it costs for a Formula One game every year. And uh, although features will be newer in the Formula One game, uh, arguably, but um, yeah, when you look at it like that, every game with a 2019, 2020, 2021, they're not subscription-based, but what they are are games that come out every single year. Another con is you need the internet. I put it down as a con because you have to have the internet to race and if you don't have the internet, not only should you not be watching this video, you shouldn't be interested in sim racing. But I put it down as a con anyway because you do need it. Just in case you have an internet blackout, uh, you do need the internet. Uh, there's no rain, that's uh, another con. This is gonna be something I'm sure that will be changed eventually. People cried out for a day-night cycle and they got it. Before my time, uh, I'm sure there was other things that the community asked for and they got. And I'm sure that rain will come at a later update. My last con is uh, a personal thing, really. It's very frustrating when you have an incident. If you're starting a race and you're going into turn one, you could spend weeks building up your eye rating, your safety rating, wanting to progress to the next class, which is done through Rookie, D, C, B, A, Pro, very similar to the Project Cars system. When you're in an incident and it's not your fault and somebody clearly rams you from behind, it can be extremely frustrating and difficult to take because we, we all do this because we're competitive and we all enjoy racing. And sometimes uh, it can be, I mean, I go into a blind rage where I start shaking, I get angry, and I never want to look at my computer again. Maybe that's just a personal problem, but in respect to the way the incidents are dealt with, I think that they could be dealt with better I don't think it's that hard to fault someone if they hit you in the ass, but yeah, that's just one thing really. So I mean, the, the whole point of the video was would I recommend eye racing? So um, this is uh, my own opinion, and I would say like yes, I, I would recommend it. Came. Within a few days of owning this game, within a few races, I was in the same lobby as Max Verstappen, and. Just to know that you're racing alongside him is pretty cool. I would say it's definitely an investment as opposed to a pick up and play game. It's something that is rewarding. If you put the time in, you'll get reward back. And you know, there's just nothing else like it. The community is fantastic. Like I said, there's always gonna be incidents just like there is at the top level for the best in the world. There's always gonna be incidents. So when you've got these people, 20 cars in a row, and you're doing a rolling start, and you go into the first corner at Spa, sometimes there's a collision. A lot of the times, there's not. And the fact that these amateur racers can all come together on a track and have such spatial awareness and such respect for each other is, is great. I remember the first race I ever had on Project Cars 2, and it was a pile up in the first corner. It's just a lot of people that don't really understand racing etiquette and what's right and what's wrong. And the fact that you can race side by side up Eau Rouge and through to Radion with another car side by side, and you're at the absolute limit of grip, and you're just trusting the guy next to you that he's gonna give you enough room and you're gonna do the same it is such a great feeling when you come out of a race, uh, even after 15 minutes, you do feel so buzzed and so 
energized and and there's not another feeling like it and i've never had that feeling with any other racing title and i truly recommend anyone just to give it a try just give a month a try so i would recommend iRacing and what i want you guys to do is put in the comments below if you've played iRacing if you like it if you don't why don't you like it what sims you do like what sims you want to see a review on and let me know if there's any questions about iRacing that I haven't covered and uh, I'll do my best to do that. If you do want to see iRacing through my point of view on my triple screens then just click on this video here and if you do like it please also subscribe and like this video and hit a dislike if you dislike it. I'm Mark and I am out.